I'll just briefly say something about the format for presentation of summary statistics. It's usually a good idea not to give too many significant figures or decimal places. You know, we had 601.6 for our normal calves. It might be better to round that up to 602, so only use three significant figures. And that's what I've done down here. And usually you want to put the mean and the standard error to the same number of significant figures, so I've only put the standard error as 17 and um, rounded the confidence interval. So note that if you've got um, decimal points or values of five or more, it, the convention is to round upwards. So the, we've got 567.5 here, we've rounded up to 568. If it had been 567.4, we'd have rounded down to 567. Sometimes people, I've seen people just chop off the last value and say give that a 635, but that's not really appropriate. So, you know, better to round the values above 5 up to the next one. And for proportions and percentages, and I think the convention is to give two significant figures for small samples because there's no more information in the, in the data. If you've, say, got a sample of less than 50, and there's no point in calculating your proportion and saying, well, it's 28.37 because with only 50 values, that 37, you know, it's, it's not going to be accurate. So just give it to two significant figures. And if you've got very large summary statistics, it's a good idea to present them, not present all the figures. You can present them as multiples of 10 to a particular power. And the similar thing for very small numbers, rather than give loads of decimal zeros after the decimal point, then if you present it as a number multiplied by 10 to the minus a power, here it's 10 to the minus 7. And that's more sort of neater and more easy to understand. So a few comments about choice of presentation. Um, you've seen you can do it in graphs, you can do it in tables, you can even express the data in a text, say, you know, the mean and standard error wa was, was this, and, you know, when you're describing your results. Or you can actually include multiple forms. It might be appropriate to have both a table and a graph and to discuss the results in the text. But the factors affecting your choice, it's probably fairly obvious that it's going to relate to what sort of thing you're doing, you're present, presenting your data to, whether it's, if it's an oral presentation, people quite like to see, I mean, they, they will like to see some figures, but they'll like to see, you know, nice pictures and diagram graphs, which show far more readily what you're trying to say about the data. If you're writing a report or doing your PhD thesis, then there's a lot more room to give the full details of the summaries, so you might want to include them there. Publications are limited by the specific journal and you'll probably have limited space, so you'll need to think carefully about whether a graph or a table is the best thing to present or whether it's enough to just state the results in the text. But you're always going to have to make decisions about which results to include, which not to include. There's bound to be stuff that you've summarised and analysed that isn't very interesting to your publication, so you'll have to make a decision as to whether to keep it in or not. And then, of course, posters are the most visual of, and you've got the smallest space, so you do need to think probably graphs are, are, are good because they're going to catch people's eyes. Uh, just a few tips. Um, for tables and graphs, think carefully about your titles and footnotes because these are greatly going to help the reader. Don't make them too long or too short. Try and really describe what's in the table or, or graph. Don't always think you've got to do graphs and tables. Some people think because you can do graphs and tables, you don't, in many situations, you don't need to put both in. And it is worth, you know, graphical presentation is a, is a very powerful way of getting your message across. So it is worth thinking you can do courses on graphical presentation. So worth putting in time and doing that as, as well as possible. There, there are often choices involved in how you present the data graphically.